Uh, so, uh, good evening. Welcome to the Friday Study Circle. And before we delve into the sunlit part, a passage of the sunlit part, let's take two minutes to be more here. So, let's focus on our breath and just be in the present. So uh, starting with the sunlit part. So the last time we did reason is developed by using it. And today we will take the next passage. It, it says education, repairing the consciousness. And today, just before we start, I had uh, uh, read a quote. I think it was by C.S. Lewis. It says that education without value, with, with education without values, as useful as it seems, rather to make man a more clever de devil. Seems rather to make man a more clever devil. So if it's not the right education, which we all know, right? Like, because everything we pick up is part of education, right? Everything we are exposed to. I think that was a good start off for this. Aspect. I think uh, that one is also very nice. Uh, the one at, in your profile right now. I think that one is very good. If you could read it once, that's also very yeah. good. Yeah. So uh, that one is that... Uh, Education is the ability to listen to almost anything without losing your temper or your self-confidence. Yeah, Ittaru, can you repeat it once more? Yeah, so this is education is the ability to listen to almost anything without losing your temper or your self-confidence. This is by Robert Frost. And it's it sounds so simple. And oh my God, right? It's just... I think can be our aspiration. <laughs> yeah, can be our aspiration. Yeah. 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 You know that uh, Kabir Doha, it keeps... I don't know, I don't remember the exact words that, you know, yun uh, chade, yun utre. Which one is this? Aisa, uh, different rang jo hote hai na, ek rang me jo range, aisa virla ko hai. Haan, man ke so again, bhatak rang hai, chin chin badle soye, ek rang me jo rahe, aisa virla ko hai. 
Yeah. yeah. And there's another one which I think I heard from Tipanya Ji again, different wording, but same essence. Anything we see, right? We get influenced and we get totally grabbed and possessed. But one, according to him, like when he was giving, explaining, he said that the journey begins from there. Like if you're just influenced from, with each and every influence, if it's taking you up, you go up. If it's taking you down, you go down, which we do so many times a day. He said that that's like, that's once you stabilize, that ek rang mein jo rang hai, aisa vidla ko hai, ki usne ap, apna rang pakar li hai. Ro pakka rang hai, it will not go off now. Then one can now begin his journey, true journey of finding himself. So, hi Priyanka, hi Meera, nice to see you both. Uh, hi. Swami, uh, Swami Vivekananda says, education is the manifestation of perfection already in men. True education, right? Like the right yeah. education. Yeah, that's... Yeah. It is there, but we have lost it. Yeah. Okay, so if anybody can, if I would request you to read this passage, Education, Preparing the Consciousness. I'll read it. Thank you. Usually all education, all culture, all refinement of the senses and the being is one of the best ways of curing instincts, desire, passions. To eliminate these things does not cure them. To cultivate intellectualize, refine them. This is the surest means of curing. To give the greatest possible development for progress and growth, to acquire a certain sense of harmony and exactness of perception. This is a part of the culture of the being, of the education of the being. Education is certainly one of the best means of preparing the consciousness for a higher development. There are people with very crude and very simple natures who can have great aspiration and attain a great, certain spiritual development, but the base will always be of an inferior quality. And as soon as they return to their ordinary consciousness, they will find obstacles in it because the stuff is too thin. There are not enough elements in their vital and material consciousness to enable them to bear the descent of the higher force. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, any reflections while you are unmuted? Can I read it again, the first part? Yeah, yeah, please. Usually all education, all culture, all refinement of the senses are and the being is one of the white, best ways of curing instincts, desires, and passions. To eliminate these things it does not cure them. To cultivate, intellectualize, refine them, this is the surest means of curing. Oh, wow. I think there's the exact opposite of what is happening in the normal sense we understand education because when uh, I have a higher degree or something that actually leads to ambition and passions and desire, it's not done in the right spirit. So I think education in the right sense is quite important. Yeah, so if we uh, take it, uh, you know, so, so, uh, Monica, do you want to say anything right now? Yeah, you want to sh wanted to share something? Go ahead. I was just reading it line by line. Why don't you? Uh, uh, nee, aap lo, uh, I think we can take it until that part that Mira read, this one yeah. uh, yeah. that she read again. I think that one is very interesting. Again, you take it? Yeah, so. Uh, with the mother and Shorobindo, I think we see that in uh, any schools that we relate with. For example, we have this Gnostic center in Gurgaon, you know, they have this preschool. So I think there, uh, 
one can have a reflection of this cultivation that mother talks about that to eliminate now according to kabir for example there is a couplet where he says ek jeev ripu panch so one being and five enemies so he is saying that the senses are our enemies why would he say that because the way we live the kind of a you know sticky ness that we have which with we live anything that comes across the senses if it's good i want it more 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 if it's bad i want i don't want it don't want it so rag and dwesh as they say you know attachment and aversion two things happen you know anything that comes through senses this is what we see that if i have a good relationship i would want more of it more of it more of it and if i have a bad disease i i don't want it i don't want it you know so this is attachment and aversion and that is the cause of our suffering so here mother and shurabindu don't talk about shunning away the senses jaise kabir is talking about senses are enemies they are talking about cultivation of senses now what would be the meaning of cultivation and refinement of senses to so, yahan pe we see that uh yeah all uh, usually all education all culture all refinement of the senses and the being is one of the best ways of curing instincts so as if instincts are something like a disease desires and passions because they are very sticky in nature you know our basic instincts the animal instincts they are very sticky in nature they are very aggressive and violent in nature desires you know again they are very sticky one rushes to fulfill the desires passions you know although the passion has intensity but if we go etymological meaning of passion we'll see it's coming from to suffer you know, passion is coming from the word meaning root is passion is means to suffer so whenever we are passionate about anything of course when i am following the passion it gives me enjoyment but when i am unable to follow the passion it gives me suffering so i think mother and shirobindo takes us towards this transcendence that no need to shun them away cultivate refinement so whatever i touch for example rather than saying it is good or bad you know we can see okay what texture it is okay is it coarse is it smooth it is rough so this is what they cultivate in uh, little children who are in this preschool for example to understand the texture fully like a scientist would understand you know like completely being with that feeling of softness of a flower petal or a you know coarseness of a stone and that is what is a little glimpse of what is means you know what it means by refinement of senses so that would be touch then hearing now whenever we hear something it's either a good song or a bad song for us you know <laughs> but for them it could be okay you know let it let me sink and immerse myself in this music where is it touching me you know in my being you know what part which instrument do i like better than the others you know so going deeper into uh, the intricacy of that whatever beauty that is i remember this once we i did a course at the gnostic center so they showed us a pillow cover like a cushion cover and we had to look at it and then like close our eyes and then imagine okay again like recreate it in our head and then look at it again so when i looked at it again i realized that there were many elements that i missed in the first looking and then i look at it again and then i see again there were some elements which i missed observing so this is refinement of visual for example senses so it's not like oh wow what a sunset so either it's wow or it's not wow <laughs> so refinement would be going deeply and immersing through our senses and since why because there is delight you know whenever we refine and cultivate our senses either it's art music whatever you know there is delight in that progress so that's what i can relate this with that not to shun away the senses and not to consume it just but rather to progress even through the senses
think what you just shared about uh, music, right? It's such an excellent art to refine the sense of hearing. Because when when you start, like you'll not know what is going off tune and below. I mean, off tune and what is in tune. And then slowly, as you start learning, then like there'll be some <laughs> something that tells you that no, this is wrong. And only we'll be feeling it, and the other person will be like, no, it's fine only. But then we'll be like, no, it's not fine. It's not in tune. So, and the more that keeps happening, I think like it keeps getting refined and there's no end to it. Absolutely. I think there was one famous anecdote uh, of a musician. I think it was maybe uh, Pandit Bismillah Khan, if I'm not wrong. So when he was on not well, you know, almost on his deathbed, somebody came and asked him, why are you crying? He was just sitting by himself and crying. And he said, I'm just realizing that I don't even know the ga, Gandharv of Sarega. <laughs> what you said, you know, that he's a famous, like, what can be more than Bismillah Khan to us, you know, mortal beings. But then he also, the because the more deeper we go in any refinement, since divine is everywhere, you know, and divine is infinite. So in each art that I go deeper, I would never be able to touch a T point that, you know, now it's like a wall and I can't go further. What you just said, that there is no end to this perfection. And that's the joy, you know, because we are always employed. You know, there is always more and more uh, to go forward to. Yes. When you listen to a song, you know, especially if it's like, I don't know, hard rock or something, you know, which you're not used to, for example, the amount of restlessness, like that something is not right, right? Like I want to step in the sense how these things, like when you were sharing about the song, I suddenly felt that rock music and I felt so much discomfort within me. It's not present yet. And yet, even my thinking is bringing me discomfort because I'm not comfortable with it. It's not nothing with the music, right? It's just my own perception of things. So I don't even know, like, you know, when you were sharing, I have never ever sat down and wondered why it discomforts me, you know, like loud, tenseless music. Why can't it be neutral? Why does it have to tell me that, you know, okay, move away, move away? And similar to that, you know, all our feelings, right? Like our thoughts, our patterns, we never sit close to them. We either, like, you know, how the, I would say the old school of thought or the Vedantic school basically just talks about mostly shunning, right? Like things are your enemies, senses are your enemies, body is something to be discarded or that's how we perceive it. I don't know what they said it because I've just heard commentaries. And how we know that anything that is suppressed, you know, like yesterday in one of the sessions, you were sharing that ball example, that it's a ball, right? Like compressible and it, I can do, 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 do this. And at the moment I remove my hand, it will just rise again. So the, it's really amazing to have the courage and the certitude and the faith that if I tell somebody to look at the slippery slopes, they would not slip. Or if they slip, they'll come right back. You know how mother says that even if you're defeated a hundred thousand times, just brush off, smile and start again. Hundred thousand times. So, because divine victory is certain. So if we change our basic thing from, okay, embracing or accepting or genuinely looking to just running away or just, you know, put, putting it under the carpet, shoving it under the carpet. There's so much refinement possible. And yet these things do take time because sometimes things are just too loud, right? Like you just too, I don't know, hurtful or painful. So one, I mean, it's not that everything has to be bombarded. And yet it's very interesting how it's a different way of looking at things. And you know, when I was small, a different example that I, I used to watch that 
सीरियल्स राइट लाइक सीआईडी टाइप्स जो होते थे व्योम केश बक्शी टीवी वगैरह पे आते थे तो उसमें आई यूज टू रिमेम्बर दैट इफ समी है सीन अ क्रिमिनल and they are describing criminals right based on which the police guy would make the picture and it would be like like as if a sketch of the person so that was i think i then i realized that how much we don't i mean how we don't see right like we look at people like i used to do this game you know as i when i was young that do i person just cross me what would i be able to describe right like almost nothing almost nothing it's just amazing how even seeing something how i don't see when I mean, you know it sounds like a word play and yet it's not even say a person who i've lived with so many years or you know like if i have to describe them again i would have issues and not just talking about the physical thing right like i see one aspect and yet so many are hidden from me because my relation just is with that aspect and i close my eyes to the other things i don't really see people i don't really see myself it's just bits and pieces and just knowing that is in itself quite surprising i share the screen again and can you um so just as you were sharing what came to me again was that when we look at someone right or when we see or when our friends or whoever it is and we would have heard something of that person so our mind would have already sketched an image or like the first uh, impression of the person and the 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 picture is me so after that every time we look at it it will be that so actually our senses are not working at that point so we are already bound by something that we originally created and that actually may be wrong and maybe i don't think it may be right in many cases but it will be wrong and we will be blinded by our senses by not seeing what is really true because there also this education thing is important i think cleaning they, the picture there is no maybe <laughs> <laughs> we are definitely wrong we can be sure you know it's always clouded and even if what taru is sharing you know even if one has lived with a person because one thinks that i'm living with a person but we are always living with images of that person and we know that he is ko aise bola hai to ye aise hi behave karega ve and that's how he behaves why because we don't realize that i am fueling the person's behavior so how do we sort of get out of it just reflect i think you already shared to observe that my perception is clouded you know jab tak ye dikhega hi nahi jab tak i am blindly believing in my images of the person and not even looking that they are images hai na wo jo mental chatter hai the person is right here in front of me and i see this thin film or maybe thick film of the mental chatter about the person i think that seeing itself is the cure you know and then rest of the process can unfold after that scene but usually we are so blinded that we don't even see that i have a curtain so i think this is quite grounding to see that i am always looking through a curtain and that's why i can't uh, be sure of my thoughts and feelings and perceptions because always there is a curtain so that really grounds you and then you will be actually listening to that fellow when he is sitting you know when the person is talking to you you're not talking to your images you're actually trying to understand what he wants to say because now you are not holding to your own ideas and judgments too tightly which may be there you know they won't just disappear right away which are there but now you see them and you say okay can you just have a sit at the corner you know and let me you know be in the present so that itself i think is the guiding light of consciousness which makes us see that we are blinded that itself i think uh, is enough we don't have to discuss the path forward that itself is enough and it's actually shocking that once you remove your perceptions or say i already know how he react or what he, he always he always says this mm-hmm. you actually hear things that you heard in before 
and if there are 10 things out of maybe two, three would disagree, but disagree, but six, seven could be making a lot of sense. But just because of my impression that, you know, that person, you know, I don't agree with what they say. I don't agree with their basic existence, you know, their perception of life. You just reject, right? Because maybe then you are not even ready the way they speak, maybe, right? The place from where they speak. But if we just remove that, that let them be where they are, you are here, they are telling you something. There are things that you can use to again help in your refinement. And another thing I have sometimes experimented with is say, there's this issue that I know that the person is very sensitive about or with me, that person has reacted in a certain way. So if I have to have a decent conversation, I've approached that I think this is a, you know, sticky point for you. But if you could give me a chance to just look at it factually, you know, giving that two to three minutes of space or that, you know, not space, but that ground, if you create, hey, I know it's a bit tough for you to talk about this, but it's important to me. Can you hear me out? You know, then the defenses on the other side, I have also seen, they don't stand up because, you know, the person is not like, you know, something is happening against me. You're like, okay, we are just having a conversation. This means nothing. Can we look at things factually? So I that's I have found it to be very helpful time and again. You know, it's like conversations are like a bridge, right? Like you have to see where you are standing. You have to see where the other is standing and then you have to make that bridge. I think we read it somewhere. I don't know, in one of the harmony circles maybe. That both aspects, okay, who, who are you talking to? How and you know who's there at the receiving end and what do you want to convey? Because usually in our everyday, you know, we forget the main essence. Like say if you're talking to our children, we forget that, you know, we do love them. That the love has to be there in our disciplining or in our, I don't know, frustrations. We could be saying a lot of things we don't actually mean ever. And yet, if I don't take a minute to just tell myself, you know, this is all in love. I could be taking conversations to places where I would not want to and yet I end up taking them in my ignorance or just So here the word is cultivate. You cultivate something, right? Then inte intellectualize. Again, you don't shun it. You think about it. You look, you want try to look at facts, refine them, make it better. And this is the surest means of growing. You know, mother says that if there's something, I mean, there should be so much stability in oneself that. There's not a, even a trigger of a movement, not a flicker, right? If something happens, there should be so much certitude that that thing flickers even within your being. Like water seems like such a high state and yet she says it's possible and that's something to again aspire for. So Monica, you can take it forward if you want to. Yeah. So something also on the same lines I heard, you know, where the uh, the teacher who was talking, he was talking about that one has to slowly develop and transcend and to such a state that, for example, the sense of touch through tongue, you know, that uh, the sense of taste. So if the thing is in front of me, which I was maybe at time desirous about, you know, maybe jalebi or whatever, you know, whatever kind of brings salivation to my tongue. So it's right in front of me and no salivation comes, you know, it's like nothing happens, right? And then he said, one has to progress to that level that you touch it to your tongue. And even then the salivation doesn't happen. I mean, wow, <laughs> what uh, inner stability, what, you know, this inner anchoring would be there. 
that at one point of time I desired it, you know, I had it, I consumed it. Now it is right here in front of me and nothing happens, you know, nothing is triggered. And not even that, that something is touched to my tongue, you know, that thing that I loved and liked. And there is complete stability. Like, wow, <laughs> you know, something to aspire uh, in our life to. Yeah. And I was wondering on it and since we talk about, you know, stable, basically stabilizing ourselves in this either inner anchor or say divine presence, we may take mother's name, you know, where, so we are inwardly telling ourselves that I am content with mother. I'm just very, very happy, content with having mother with me. Nothing more is desired. I think that slowly it only gets cultivated because the way we are, we are just used to things which are not good for us. So mother may be good for us, but since I'm not used to stabilize myself in the mother, I run away, you know, and anything comes, any beautiful thing comes here and I pop up, you know, something looks very glittery. Forget the mother, you know, let me jump at it. So I think this has to uh, de develop and slowly we have to get convinced that this is the best way for me to take forward this life to have this inner solidity and stability that uh, nothing more is required and yet being there you are immersing in the happenings of the world so now they will not have that much of effect over me the way they sway me at every you know nook and corner the way they appear so glittery to me now they will not appear glittery because I have found contentment within. But uh, this has to be found, I think. Uh, it's not like by default case with anyone. We have to work towards it. And mother says that equanimity is the first thing before we begin to walk in integral yoga, you know, in the path of yoga. This equanimous poise that you are having this inner, ingathered consciousness, inner stability. You know, and now you can master your thought, your impulses, your feelings. So with this anchor of light within, this rootedness within, now a self-mastery can get developed, which is the aim of integral yoga. So that sounded very beautiful to have this solidity that at every trigger, and triggers will come, and mother says that these triggers come so that I can get tested. Okay, how is my stability with the mother? Look, that came and, you know, I left the mother immediately because I thought that something I'm going to get from that. And if I miss that, something really bad is going to happen. Yeah, but I think it's really beautiful even to just walk on this path of cultivating this inner groundedness, inner anchoring uh, with the mother's name or any divine name or in the body, keeping the mind anchored in the body, rooted in the body. Not that it jumps at every trigger. And good, if triggers come, it's good because it's like an adventure, you know, like an experiment for me. Okay, how much that does that sway me? How much does that sway me? It's like an experiment. Yeah, so this, the last few lines are to give the greatest possible development for progress and growth to acquire a certain sense of harmony and exactness of perception. Now, this reminds me again, referring to the school, preschool by uh, Gnostic Center. So there, there was one exactness of perception, what Taru was sharing earlier, that I may live with the person for a long time, yet I don't know the features, you know, never really cared to look at it. Although I look at him or her every day, but nothing gets registered. So because there is, you know, there's, there is haze and there is this curtain of my perceptions. So the one ex one uh, game that we played was they, they had this like a table and on that like few baskets were there. And in each basket, there were uh, a certain amount of 
say pebbles or balls there and we had to have a look at it like once like the whole basket it in, is in front of me i can look at what are the colors of the balls and how many are there but uh, then they are taken away you know suddenly you are like blindfolded and now you have to tell the examiner okay how many were there in the first now this is exactness of perception that you didn't count it but you your guess is right your intuitive guess is right that okay there were four or in the other one there were a mix of red and blue three red and four blue you know and this you have only gotten a glimpse of it you don't have enough time to have a calculation you don't even know beforehand what is the question they are going to ask you so it's just like you had a look okay now tell us you know these answers and there we just got to know that it's nothing that we look at <laughs> just blinded by our mental haze so that's exactness of perception that whatever i'm looking at like there is a image created in my mind which is a good use of use of my thought power of thought power of imagination that it exactly copies it and that's why you know when i used to copy uh, some of us you know we do art like you try to copy either a portrait or somebody's features i think that itself is a very good practice to develop this refinement yeah. copying imitating imitating nature maybe you sit in front of a tree and try to imitate it the colors because they are you to, you're in the present moment you are with that tree and you are just using your senses refining your senses to make it more and more close to real so that would be again one reflection of exactness of perception and instead of draining our energies here and there we can <laughs> yeah, use it here that's well said well said. you know once i was living in a rental home i lived there for 2 years and when i was you know we were packing i was sitting uh, you know with the didi and uh, we were taking out stuff that we had to throw and there was a box of yellow paint and i was like what is yellow paint doing here and she looked at me very surprised she said didi uh, aapki wall yellow hai aapke room ki so i was like over oh, matlab 2 years 2 years and it did not register that the wall is yellow like one of the walls in the room where i used to sleep for 2 years and just seeing the extent of the i don't even know what to call it like what kind of blindness would that be that i am surprised that what is yellow paint doing here and you know when i was in uh, school they had shown us in college a video it's a very famous video i'm sure a lot of you could have i mean i'm not sure but they would have seen it there was this thing that before the class the professor told us that you know there's a basketball match going on and you have to tell me and i'll see who tell me the right amount it's very tricky how many times the ball has been passed Okay, and he played the two-minute video, and we all watched. And then he we said, okay, how many people started giving guesses, whatever, whatever. And then he said, did anybody find anything odd there? There were about hundred students, I think, and nobody could say anything. That no, this much, this much, this much. And then he played the video again, and he said, now you don't have to look at the ball; you look at the video. So there was a guy dressed up as a bear who was running around. you know while they were passing like he was coming in he was out and none of the 100 students had seen that bear just because we were asked that to focus on so i think i don't know a lot of reflections can be said on that one is pretty good right that if you're focused no matter what comes you don't care and secondly that what kind of a focus is this that a bear is running in a basketball court and you would not even see because you're so busy seeing something that you have told to see or you know you want to see something in people in situations in life so no matter what's happening good or bad your focus is okay no this is how it is and you don't comprehend things in totality mm. Uh, i remember uh, one test uh, conducted by professor professor went to the class 
and uh, he says i am conducting a surprise test today so uh, he gave uh, uh, one one sheet of question paper to everybody and he turned it upside down and he says when i say ready go then you start writing so he distributed the papers and it was upside down and uh, he says that uh, uh, this uh, you have to write for about 5 minutes the uh, exam should be over within 5 minutes so uh, then is a ready steady go start so uh, then time started and everybody uh, turned the paper and <clears throat> they saw that there is nothing printed or written on the paper but there was a black small dot at the center of the page so within 5 minutes everybody wrote and then he collected the paper so then uh, he was telling uh, he asked one person to read the answers which was written so everybody wrote about the black dot nobody has read written anything about the white paper <clears throat> 99.9% it was white so nobody has written anything about that. so uh, this is something uh, which all of us are doing really like uh, uh, for joining the armed forces officers uh, we have to go through a a uh, test called ssb services selection board it is a scientifically devised there are three prong system uh, one is the psychological test and uh, one is the gto group testing officer test and the third is the interview so uh, the, for six days uh, the uh, examination goes on no preparation required so in one of the psychological test i was uh, <clears throat> remembering <clears throat> monica ji that uh, uh, psychological test uh, there is one uh, one paper it was like uh, in a hall uh, you will be there uh, where it can be made dark place actually after switching off you cannot see anything so uh, there some uh, picture has been shown on a video uh, for 30 seconds and then uh, the lights will be on you cannot see the picture now uh, there is a uh, paper uh, so one page you have to write within 3 and 1/2 minutes you have to write something about the picture which you have seen means so what uh, uh, what picture uh, you can observe many people they uh, you know whatever uh, they think or they write or something so likewise uh, the 12 such Uh, papers pages you have to written and the last will be uh, the blank the screen is white so uh, they say that uh, examiner says that <clears throat> you write about yourself as if uh, as if you are seeing yourself in that white paper white uh, screen so likewise the test is to go on so uh, the idea is the like we are uh, you know in bengali there's one song ami nayane bosono bandhiya boshe adhare morigo kadiya kadiya means uh, the says i am closing my eyes are closed with a piece of cloth tied on the piece of cloth in my eyes uh, and i am seeing that i am crying i am crying foul by saying that i cannot see anything i have only tied the uh, tied the piece of cloth which is impermeable to light and i am only crying that i cannot see anything so that is the stage that is the stage actually we are we are in we are uh, the, our perception and all, all these are uh, secondary duplicate it's not mine i i could not understand who am i i Uh, whatever has been told uh, as that sort that sort from the beginning of my life so i made to believe that and we're running and the eyes is closed and you're seeing that yes i know everything i know everything about that person in and out but actually truth is that i don't know anything about that person then uh, one of the lecture in uh, ramakrishna mission that the one uh, <clears throat> person is saying that uh, uh, 
the uh, we are not seeing anything actually uh, you, you are there in a room and the lights are on and a mirror is there and you can see your uh, face so have you looked at your face oh, yes but actually you are not looking at the face this is a wrong conception because if you switch off the light you cannot see the face on the mirror mirror is there uh, you are there eyes are there but you cannot see so if uh, if you are perceiving through our senses then we have to be there perpetual shashat monika ji was uttering this word shashat it should be permanent it's not permanent this is uh, even if you're if you're looking in the sunlight something but if i ask you what you are looking is nothing but actually your mind is somewhere else and your eyes somewhere else and your brain uh, which is perceiving the thing or interpreting that is somewhere else so we are not seeing so we are in that stage uh, and monika ji was mentioning about the equanimity unless unless the equanimity is there like i am i am there and then probably you can uh, try to understand what we are seeing what we are hearing and what we are speaking and all those things otherwise we are totally out totally off like uh, in the village school uh, the <clears throat> we we read uh, so many things but after uh, passing uh, passing class 10th if you ask uh, what have you uh, read all these years you will not be in a position to say anything because we have uh, started by hurting something or something something and wrote in that examination and it's over it is gone so uh, so it is like this we are passing life every moment uh, you are taking our breathing every moment but we do not know actually uh, what is it who is doing this how the things are who am i and all this are not there we are totally out totally out of the subject matter and uh, for uh, rejection like uh, Uh, Taruji was mentioning in the listening to education. Listening is education. So uh, that means we have already surrendered our ego. Otherwise, uh, if I am full of ego, uh, I will not be allowed. Somebody by force has been told that listening is also good habit, more than the speaking. So you just be quiet to yourself and listen what is happening around. So hardly you will find such somebody like that who will be able. to do this constantly unless uh, somebody has gone to the sthita pragya stage as uh, dictated by krishna and uh, arjun asked actually that how what are the methods by which we can we can control our senses sthita pragya every every stage of life anything good bad happens or anything of this there is no change you are same if you are of smiling face you will be smiling throughout and nothing happens sthita pragya so uh, i remember one anecdote uh, somebody goes to the doctor he has a constant headache actually. he goes to the doctor doctor says see there is one uh, very easy medicine very uh, strong medicine is there uh, if you are having headache cut your head off there will be no headache you know it is a permanent solution it will never come again so uh, mother saradama never uh, never rejected any caste this one muslim or hindu or anything and whoever came he fed them she fed them so there somebody asked that says you are brahmin by caste and uh, you are feeding that muslim child as, as if uh, he is your son he says yes he is my son i am the mother of everyone people the persons those who are born those who are born those who are uh, now being born and those will be born i am the mother of everyone so everybody is equal in front of my eyes so how can i distinguish that this chap is muslim this chap is hindu this chap is christian or anything of this nature so like here here also the mother says that they don't reject anything like eliminate to eliminate this thing does not cure them so everybody has come so we have to it, it is there it, it is there in full form so so we cannot eliminate them that no you, you are not you, you are not fit to join this ashram or do this practice or something and all this 
we are not to eliminate them. So then what we have to do? We have to purify. We have to uh, we have to get that uh, that me. I am ever pure, but I didn't know that. So I can I can uh, uh, clean myself. I can wash myself. And all. That's the mother's mother's duty actually. The mother removes all the darkness. They say this is the light. This is the light. That's why probably the the book is also the sunlit path. So actual path, the correct path, the true, uh, which is permanent. So that path is being shown. But so we have to, uh, unless uh, we cool down, cool down the mind, probably we will not be able to understand and realize what what I am believing is it true or not? What I am perceiving it is true or not? So the, I should be debating myself inside, then probably I can understand that who am I. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Captain. A lot to reflect on so many anecdotes. Yeah, do we want to uh, take it further? Yeah, I think we can maybe go through this once again. So education is certainly one of the best means of preparing the consciousness for a higher development. I think this is referring to the previous uh, kind of education that mother was talking of. There are people with very crude and very simple natures who can have great aspiration and attain a certain spiritual development. But the base will be always of an inferior quality. And as soon as they return to their ordinary consciousness, they will find obstacles in it. Because the stuff is too thin, there are not enough elements in their vital and material consciousness to enable them to bear the descent of a higher force. So mother uh, has uh, shared many small, small anecdotes where she says that I know of people who would, when they are in communion with the divine or they're in touch with that absolute, you know, uh, they are in touch with the Supreme, suddenly they would act like geniuses. But the moment they have lost the touch, what was shared in this, you know, the moment it is back in ordinary consciousness, that's again still base, it is not refined. And that's where uh, I think our task of uh, not even just attaining, you know, this silence and peace in the spirit, but also working with making the mind more supple, quiet, alert, yet relaxed. You know, usually our relaxation is the moment we get relaxed, we become sleepy. This happens with most of us, you know, we are relaxed, the mind thinks, okay, it's time to sleep. <laughs> so that's why initially in our meditations, we often fall in sleep, you know, fall to sleep when somebody is guiding us into a meditation because the mind relaxes. And since it has been churning throughout the day, it, it, it did not get any time you know, to stop the chatter. The moment a bit of relaxation comes, some soothing music, some good words, it just dozes off to sleep. So keeping, you know, again, this is a refinement of the mind, keeping the mind very relaxed in open it, awareness. Uh, yoga Nidra. Yeah. It was known as Yoga Nidra. Yeah, but I'm not talking of yoga nidra actually. I'm talking of the uh, nidra of tamas. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're <laughs> hinting at, but it's not yoga nidra. But when we, uh, so there are again, you know, ways to sleep and masters have said that when you, for example, bring the mind to a quiet, like centering it with mother's name, divine name, or centering it with breath, and then staying as open awareness. Now, if you go to sleep, good way to sleep, you can sleep. And when you will get up, you'll be refreshed. 
not like you feel still tired. Uh, but usually the way we are is that we are relaxed, the body is just tha and gone to sleep. So we don't even prepare for sleep. The mind has to be prepared as mother says about the sleep, you know, the yoga of sleep and dreams. So one has to get prepared uh, for sleep. So that would be again one uh, refinement here. And yeah, what was the other? Can you just put it on again? Yeah, so this is what I was sharing that uh, the moment that person is gotten disconnected from that supreme uh, connection, the divine essence, immediately the moment he's back into his uh, thoughts and feelings, he's a very ordinary person, nothing very you know refined about him. I have seen many, you know, uh, not many, you know, just interaction with a couple of musicians look like vocalists or performers who when they're in the music you know they're like wow you know like the divine is singing or you know the playing music through them but the moment they return back to their ordinary consciousness their thoughts their feelings are just as base as you know all of us so nothing refined in them like something like an ugliness also if you compare to their beauty when, when they were singing <laughs> So I think there lies our responsibility of, like mother says, all life is yoga. Sri Aurobindo says, all life is yoga. So not only when I'm in that supreme divine state that I'm pure, can I maintain that purity 24 seven? Keeping a, a good alertness in the mind. What am I thinking right now? Why am I thinking like that? So, and again and again, refining, rejecting the ugly, surrendering to divine feet and maintaining that inner sanctity and purity. As Sri Aurobindo says that if you want to install the divine presence, the temple has to be pure. So in an ugly temple, even in our Indian temples, you know, we, we clean the temple. You know, we have rites and rituals proper for every hour. And that's where the divine presence has to be invoked. So I think this preparation of our instrument of the mind, emotions and body, that is what I can see here that it's not that the moment I am returning to my ordinary consciousness, you know, all gossip is allowed and or I allow all kind of, you know, unhealthy thoughts, I entertain them. Because now I am not in a session, for example. Why can't life be a complete thorough investigation you know a kind of a purity that can be maintained and that has its own joy i feel you know when we begin to purify our being maintain an inner sanctity and keep a check on our thoughts and feelings turn them to divine again and again that has its own purity and joy yeah, yeah so i think a task for a lifetime <laughs> to make the container, the instrument so solid and yet so flexible and supple that when the divine grace dawns in that instrument, it doesn't like sway because of too much joy, too much delight. Like a plastic glass and imagine us like a stone rock solid glass. If the flow of Ganges is pouring in a plastic glass, it would just tha, you know, go on begins to dance <laughs> too much joy can't handle but then there is a solidity in the mind vital and the body what we also in other words called grace you know when we see a person walking you know or speaking we say that person has grace you know that solidity stability so that when divine grace wants to flow chooses that as an instrument we don't you know, we can handle that much of joy and delight and beauty Long, long process, but at least good to embark upon it. You know. yeah. And that's what education is. And not, uh, I think, again, we were talking today of uh, how the Britishers, you know, cut the roots of Indian spiritual education, gurukuls and all that. And how we are just now busy in studying subjects so that I can have more money. <laughs> No more good job, corporate job, whatever we want, you know. And then we never ask a question for what? Why to delay my joy and contentment 
for a life which is yet to come and you know go in misery all these years why not to follow my joy right now Any uh, comments? Any reason? Yeah, there's so many things uh, happening as Monica was speaking, but one of it was that I think our mind naturally finds it very odd when one of it is not aligned to each other. Like, for example, uh, there was this person in our uh, neighborhood who, who used to sing bhajans, and uh, I think he had read like one particular uh, scripture or something and he would like sing buttons and call people over and all that uh, but for whatever reason I naturally found it very odd like so he always used to say that you whoever came there has to dance so dance in the delight of uh, the divine or something and don't be egoistic so I used to find that very hurtful I'm just <laughs> yes because I don't want to dance. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm egoistic I, I would be but maybe not here maybe I just want to be in control of my emotions and maybe I'm not even enjoying this. I, I would feel that maybe this is not the way that I would connect with uh, like God or something. And after that, like I would always, uh, like people would adore him uh, about his skills, but I would always say, oh, this person lies, oh, this person brags, like it is, it's not sinking. Like, you know, if you're claiming to be or whatever, this is your path of going to the divine or something, then, you know, what about the other, what about the rest? It's 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 very like it's very odd naturally, but yeah, only if, I guess we try to see it. I think good lesson for us when we get into our dogmas, you know. So as mother says that you mirroring, we can use other people as mirrors, because we also get into such rigidity that if you are not following my way, then it's a bad way. <laughs> Yeah, or an egoistic way. That was funny. <laughs> that was really funny. Yeah. So I actually have to be somewhere in 15 minutes. So I would need to leave the passage. This one is over. Should we call it a day? It's eight already. I know we would like to stay a bit longer, but yeah, I think if everybody is done sharing reflections. Priyanka didn't say anything in case she wants to share anything before we end. Just absorbing, listening and absorbing and I'm enjoying it this way. Okay. Awesome. That, that's nice. Yeah. Yes. So refinement of senses. That's what is constantly coming to my mind and I, that's so beautiful. Trying to understand, deepen my own understanding, five senses and to refine all of them. So that is, has been my takeaway from today's session that you have to use your senses to be able to, so that's the ladder the initial ladder or whatever, because God has given us these senses. I mean, God, or we we have these senses, so we have to use them. And that is the only way to also transcend our own limitations. So, use refine karke because so beautifully it was written, uh, we just read it, that uh, <clears throat> to rejection, I don't think that is possible also that how can you reject because you are still, you know, mind say reject, it's not possible. That's a power in itself, isn't it? And to reject, it's also beautiful to refine it, to transform it. So it's just echoing in my mind, this word refinement. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been just enjoying listening and absorbing so much to learn thank you thank you so so much <clears throat>
Yeah. Okay, then thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Priyanka, Meera, Padalji. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.